and welcome to uh, a Nightcast Creative One-Shot. Tonight we are playing the Root RPG from Leader Games and Magpie Games. We are playing in the uh, Peleniki Glade Quick Start. Uh, the Root RPG is powered by Apocalypse. Uh, very cool, fun RPG that I would recommend checking out. Um, you can find the uh, quick starts for three different um, glades, three different uh, um, clearings on Magpie's website. If you want to give it a try for yourself, it's pretty easy once you get down to it. You just need a couple dice, a few players, and these guides give you characters to play. Uh, speaking of characters, I am joined by three characters three players uh, playing characters. These players are characters in their own rights. Uh, Doug, why don't you start by telling us who you're playing tonight? Tonight, I am playing Roderick the Bat. Roderick is a, a harrier in this game, and harrier is a, is a, a way of playing a character that causes a lot of chaos, a lot of damage um, to the world that we're playing in. And, uh, yeah, do you want more information about Roderick's background, or is that enough? You could, whatever you want to tell us about Roderick, I'm okay. sure everybody's happy to hear. Um, Roderick uh, kind of fights for the people, fights for the, the forest and its clearings and paths, and is a bit of a, a I would say a disruptor to um, the the reigning factions, which in this world are the the Marquisat and the uh, the Iri, the Iri. Yep. Um, and as a as a bat, Roderick is one of of many uh, thousand uh, big family that have been here a long time and wants to. Kind of reclaim the the land, bring reclaim it back the to skies, right? Yeah, okay. Reclaiming the skies maybe is going to be one of Roderick's. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, we all need catchphrases. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> all right, let me write down <laughs> reclaim the skies. Um, but other than that, um, th that's pretty much Roderick, and I think Roderick is um, slowly, very slowly amassing a. Uh, uh, a group of, of followers. <laughs> all two of them. <laughs> Slow, slowly in all caps. Uh, that's Roderick. And Doug, before we move to our next player, can you tell us a little bit about you, the player? Uh, well, uh, my name is Doug Eberhardt, and I'm a artist and educator and musician, and I like making things and making music. Uh is this is this plug or is this this just just plug me? away if you want yeah oh, sure. yeah a uh, proto plug check out the the bunk bed bros on uh, Bandcamp Bandcamp.com slash yeah. bunk bed bros <laughs> any links all. we mention are are down below in the show notes and to check out all the lovely podcasts from uh, from Nightcast Creative and Dicey Cantina <laughs> Crystal who are you playing tonight I am playing. Daisy the Mouse Raider. Um, I like what the sheet already came up with. Um, oh, she's like feisty and thinks that she's bigger and tougher than she is. She's just a mouse, but she's got a lot of spunk and a sharp axe and a keen eye for opportunity. She finds the beauty in the chaos of battle, the family forged of spilled blood, and the clink of coins in her pouch. And um, yeah, she's really loyal to Roderick the bat here <laughs> and thinks he's pretty great because she thinks that they're basically both mice but he has wings and that's super cool <laughs> and, i don't know uh, that he feels the same way about that <laughs> what was daisy's catchphrase oh yeah consequences be damned <laughs> or, or was it just damn the consequences <laughs> however either way either yeah way. she's workshopping it you gotta, you gotta mix it up every now and then <laughs> And can you tell us a little bit about Crystal, the player? I'm Crystal, the player. Um, <laughs> I'm married to that guy, Andrew, there, who we haven't, who is going to speak in a second. And I just kind of followed him into the role-playing game stuff. And I'm super new to it, even though it's been like a year and a half. 
but I still don't really know what I'm doing. So I'll keep asking lots of questions. It's all good. Trying out new stuff. Yep. I'm a mom and an artist and I love nature and making stuff too. And what podcast are you on? Um, the Fox Club Letters by Dicey Cantina. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I have my voice in quite a few, but I won't remember. I'm sorry. (laughs) And last but not please, not not pleased. Last but not pleased. <laughs> I'm not pleased about this. <laughs> last but not least, Andrew, who are you playing tonight? Oh, tonight I am playing David Todd Toddinson, a fox ranger. Dave for short. Dave is fine, but everyone should know his full name. Uh, he's a bit of a cynic loner, kind of the quiet one. He's a watcher of Daisy and a protector of Roderick. Uh, somehow he's found himself that these two folk are acceptable. And uh, <laughs> while he usually prefers to be alone in the woods with his thoughts and his, what, bow? Yeah, I think he's got a bow. Uh, <laughs> he's interested to see the, the world that uh, Roderick promises to create once he reclaims the skies. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and... A little bit about Andrew the oh, player. Yeah. Andrew the person is the a uh, person of Dicey Cantina and creator of podcasts and other things galore. Uh, co-maker, really just player, while Mark edits uh, Path of the Storm, but it's still a lot of fun. And other things Nightcast, uh, hopefully soon. You can check out what we do at DiceyCantina.com or at Dicey Cantina on social media. Excellent. And you should and listen to the Fox Club letters. You should. I am Mark, the GM for this session. I make podcasts on Nightcast Creative. I make Coruscant Nights and the other place and co-produce Path of the Storm, Star Wars, High Republic podcast. Um, you can hear me on all of my friends' podcasts, such <laughs> as the Fox Club letters, which you should listen to right now. Yes. <laughs> And without further ado, let's get started. The three of you have been traveling. Um, We uh, see our bat, our mouse, and uh, fox fox as they make their way along a path into a clearing called Peleniki Glade. The sun spills down through a patchwork canopy of leaves, dappling the walls of the clearing with speckles of brilliant golden light. The walls themselves are well made. Tall, cut planks of wood topped with perfectly symmetrical spikes. The gate is carved with the sigils of the Goshawk family, a talon clutching a golden sun, along with figures of goshawk history and lore, all beautiful and expertly hewn. The air between the forest floor and the leaves above is filled with rope lines and hanging nets, strung to form geometric patterns from any perspective, while providing both lines for birds to cross above the buildings below and a defense from any would-be avian attackers. Mouse burrows and homes dot the forest floor beneath the rope layers. Nothing shows any signs of the damage, destruction, or dilapidation that besets other clearings throughout the woodland. The war has left Peleniki Glade untouched as of yet. The three of you get to the gates. You see mice guarding them with spears. And one mouse walks out to, to meet you as you, um, as you walk up. And do any of you know anything about this place? About... Uh, Peleniki Glade. Does does uh, does David? I 
don't think so, but probably. Okay. <laughs> if you don't remember it from you. Can your, I ask a question? You can ask a question. Please ask a question. So I, I was just confused at first because I heard glade, so I was thinking just like open nature, but then you were talking about walls. So is it is it a city named Pelaniki Glade? It is. Or? Yes, in a big clearing. Okay. You can see tall, city. tall trees. And as you look around and look up, you can see that there are um, bird homes up in the trees where um, the, the fancy people who rule this place live. You can see the mouse burrows in places um, beneath the roots of the trees going down into the ground. That's pretty cool. I guess they all, so they all live in harmony, hopefully, in this one city. The, it the seems like the, the war mice. has not touched it. So outside mm. of, of this, uh, this clearing, the places that you've been, the, um, the armies of the uh, Irie dynasties, the various birds and, and their warriors have been fighting with the Marquisat, these invading people from an empire uh, outside the woodlands. And here and there, the Woodland Alliance will pop up and attack both sides, trying to um, uh, gain independence from any of these uh, rich and, and wealthy people who know nothing of the uh, toils of, of, of everyday woodland creature life. Uh, but this place seems peaceful. And a um, mouse guard walks and approaches the, the three of you as you get to the, the gate. The um, doors of the gate are, are wide open right now. Um, it is the middle of the day. I think you're your journey here has not been the easiest. I know that you each have uh, a little bit of fatigue marked and, and your weapons need some repair, um, something that you're hoping to get here. And this uh, mouse walks up and says, Ah, greetings, travelers. I, what brings you to the glade today? Ah, fare thee well, Mouse Guard. We are here seeking uh, shelter, seeking rest. Won't you please let a few weary travelers as ourselves through yonder gate? You see that from his uniform that this is the captain of the guards, and he says to you, Ah, uh, where have you been traveling from? What news do you bring from the, uh, the nearby clearings? We tell them about the mole people being unhappy with us. Uh, if we do, maybe we won't say that it's us that they're unhappy with. <laughs> I know Daisy definitely like puffed up a little. She's like, "Oh, they're mice guards with uh, what do you say spears?" And she's like, yeah. "I want to make sure I look tough enough." Because I'm also a mouse and all that. But she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Looking beyond this, Captain, you see quite a few mice uh, walking the streets of this clear. News of the woodlands is complicated, as it always is. But here in... Here in... Uh, Peliniki. Pel here in Peliniki, it's... Uh, news travels that Peliniki... Uh, lives free under a free sun and we are here to join you uh, it I, I just had to be sure that the three of you were hmm, not ruffians of any sort there has been an, some tragedy in Peliniki Glade as of late and well Don't worry yourselves about it. Well, if since you, you are... mentioned it. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned it. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did mention it. Uh, our mayor, oh, no. uh, Mayor Gosaki, he, he died. Mayor mm. passed? I'm so sorry to hear it. Yes, Mayor Alton Goss 
Bassock died. It's it's a tragedy. The, the the funeral is tomorrow, but it's it's family only. Mm. Anyway, please welcome to our city. We can find plenty of places to rest and have your items repaired. Thank you kindly. Do you think there's we... anything we can do to help? Sounds like he's dead. <laughs> it's a difficult thing to help with, unfortunately. Well, thank you for your hospitality. We'll, we'll venture onwards. Uh, the name's Wasi, Captain Wasi. Uh, actually, if the two, the uh, three of you would follow me, I'll be able to make your stay more comfortable. Uh, come to the the guardhouse, uh, please. Uh, in my experience, the guardhouse isn't particularly the most comfortable place in a town such as this. Well, do we do a little? You mentioned a, the the ho- what the inns. There are a, a, a few inns, but uh, please, if you would follow me to the guardhouse, uh, this this won't take long. What are we doing? Just <laughs> uh, <laughs> regular. Regular guard things, Reg- just you know. I'm I sorry. Be like, Thank you. No. <laughs> there have there have been rumors of strange people in the in the forest around here, and I I would be Ruffians. more I would be comfortable, most comfortable, if the three of you would come with me, and we can have a quick chat about the state of things in this great woodland of ours, just for a few moments and. Can't and then you can be on your way. So does someone want to figure this person out? What's the thing we can do, right? Oh, yeah. It is a thing you could do. It's not a thing I can really do because my charm is a negative one. But oh, I'm not charming either. Am I? Is Daisy charming? <laughs> are you a charmer? Charm. Is Daisy a charmer? Nobody's charming. Nobody's charming. <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> charming. <laughs> Good. Please try. Somebody can try. <laughs> All right. All you have to do is roll two dice. I will roll for this. Uh, do we get anything with this? No, 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 and no. Okay. I got a three. <laughs> you got a three. It's pathetic. Yeah. Sounds uh, low. <laughs> I got almost the worst I could do. So how how is it super obvious that you are trying to uh, figure this person out? Hmm. I think it's just a, uh, I, I think Dave thinks that he's asking like really clever questions mm-hmm. to try and just kind of get to the bottom of, of this, but it's more of just like a, you know, I don't really want to talk about things or talk about news. It's, this isn't the accent I started with, but it's okay. It'll come back eventually. Uh, it'll merge into something else, apparently. Uh, don't worry about it. My accent's totally normal. It's it's not uh, it's not unusual for t- the pl- t- stop looking at me like that. Okay. <laughs> Looks just, over his shoulder. I, I was just trying to figure you out. Okay. <laughs> and just gestures, and the the two guards that are guarding the door come closer with their spears and try to herd the two of you into, or the three of you into, into the guardhouse. I've got an axe. I'm very uncomfortable. It's yeah, they, going on. They're very aware of your axe. Um, and, uh, oh, I gotta the, look like not a ruffian. I'm not a yeah, ruffian. <laughs> the, the three of you get into this guardhouse and, and one of the spear wielding guards ducks through the door and closes it behind him and, and stands there. And this captain gestures for you three to take a seat at a, at a large wooden table. There are, uh, there's one uh, candle in a sconce on the wall. The windows are small slits, things that you could fire arrows through. And uh, 
It says, please, uh, would you, the three of you, please take a seat. Very reluctantly. Hmm, gladly. We'd be happy to take a seat. We can answer any questions that you'd have for us. What was the last clearing you were at? I believe it was... Burrows Hollow. Hollow. Yes, we were there nigh a, a fortnight ago. Burrows Hollow. I have a hollow. I've not heard of this place. How distant is it? I'd say uh, few, it's like two weeks few. away. Yeah. <laughs> is that what a fortnight is? <laughs> <laughs> We've been walking for days. I'm sorry, we're a bit tired. What dangers have you met on the road? Um, Nothing we couldn't handle. Clearly some. I see the dents in the mouse's shield. I see uh, bruised knuckles. That's just practice. She was fighting the tree. (laughs) Practice. Also, we were building things. Um, I think the, the, the three of us are good enough at being uh, very secretive, t- telling nothing. Secretive. Uh, <laughs> obtuse, that's the right word. Oh, am, I, am I good at being secretive? I feel like she kind of shoots off. But okay. I think obtuse was the right word there. <laughs> Doesn't that mean dumb? No. Yes. No, um, that would be like... Oblivious or something. Which faction do the three of you ally yourselves with? Uh, The three of us, we... We uh, do not align with any of the three factions. We are uh, neutral entrepreneurs. We are uh, travelers, adventurers. And uh, we're here to to uh, just partake in in the in the uh, in Peleniki Glades uh, wares and just here to enhance your economy. Nothing more. Tourists. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We've got is coins. That, is that true? Are you here to enhance their economy and nothing more? I mean, probably. But I don't think that's ever been true for us. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's our go-to excuse. <laughs> would Would Roderick like to attempt to trick the captain? Is it charm? <laughs> no, it is cunning. Uh, let's see. Is my cunning good? I don't think it is that great, but... Oh, it's, oh, it's negative one. My charm is zero. <laughs> So I'm the, I'm less cunning than I am charming. Probably makes sense, but I'm lucky. Uh, what about trust fate? Can I do that? <laughs> what? Uh, how do you want to do that? So in this game, trust fate is. Uh, Get through trouble using only your luck. Um, Even on a success, you are only going to scrape by. Uh, honestly, I was uh, thinking maybe we would even just tell this guy that what we dealt with, because it seems like he probably doesn't like the mark he sought either. Um, that did cross my mind. So maybe I'll just try and do a failed charm <laughs> uh, or a cunning I'll try and trick him. What? Uh, we don't want to tell him about the Woodland Alliance, though. No, we don't want to do that. Okay. So what do you tell him? But I am trying to trick him right now. And no, and I mean, if you're telling him about the, the story about the the moles and the Marquisat, mm-hmm. which, by the way, if you are on the Nightcast Patreon, you heard all of. What is the the short mm-hmm. story of that, uh, Roderick? That you tell um, Captain Wosi Captain... as he introduced himself as. Well, Captain Wosi, we need to be 
vigilant, careful about who we disclose certain details to as uh, this is we are a country, uh, a forest at war, and we wouldn't want to bring war to this uh, lovely clearing you have. But we did uh, on our way from Burroughs Hollow encounter the Marquis Sot and there were there was a, a scuffle and yeah I assume you have no love for the Marquis Sot either so I would recommend that you prepare yourself and uh, that's really all that's happened we really are here just to rest there is little love for the Marquisat within these walls. If, if the story you're telling me is true, you three are capable uh, travelers. <laughs> Louder for the people in the back. <laughs> Super capable. There's a, we can help. There is a place in... Uh, in town, the uh, beer borough. It's a small um, watering hole. If you would meet me there this evening, yeah. I may have a job for the three of you. We'll pay, it will pay, and it will pay well. We're listening tonight. <laughs> What time? Uh, Which time zone? <laughs> <laughs> at at dark at dusk. <laughs> uh, quarter past. Quarter past the after the sun goes down. Perfect. Totally be there. Uh, Frederick, please see these three out. And the, you, the mouse opens the door and uh, lets the three of you out and into the clearing. The place is wide open, the um, sunlight coming in through the green leaves far above. As the three of you walk into the clearing, you see... Um, the the burrows beneath the trees, you see um, uh, a number of smaller buildings, some of them fancy and, and tall. You see those those same motifs that you saw on the, the gate with the, the talon, um, the uh, carvings of, of, of birds and, and um, historical figures. And you are looking for a place to... Uh, repair and rest what sort of place do you normally like to go to the quietest one off in a corner somewhere sure you find a place off uh, around the back of of uh, the clearing um, it's it's close to one of the walls it's uh, not well traveled there are not a ton of people around as you get there you see the the sign above the doorway for the route bound in and um you make your way down a set of um earthen steps into a small burrow you're greeted by a another mouse um named uh as she, she introduces herself greetings Welcome, you three. I have plenty of rooms. My name is Elaine, and I own the Root Bound Inn. Um, how long will you be staying here with us? What do you say, Rod? Um, well, just the night, but if we need to extend our stay, is that... Oh, no, uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Just the night for now, then, and thank you very much. I will have uh, Billy show you to your rooms. And, Who's Billy um, a goat? 
no, Billy is not a goat. <laughs> Billy is uh, a little star-nosed mole. <gasps> and he, as he um, walks along, you see him uh, touching the wall to know where he's going. And leads you to your, your little rooms. They're very small. They're comfortable. Um, uh, little desk with a candle on it. Small bed with a straw mattress and a um, uh, little, little trunk at the foot of it. You can probably stow your gear. I know that uh, Daisy has some pretty heavy armor. I don't know if she wants to wear it all the time. Um, She'll leave her her. Ju- it's speci- specified a large shield. Large. She'll shield. leave that, but she definitely likes her. What kind of armor did I have? Some kind of armor. Plate armor. Scaled, I think it said. Your cumbersome Plate. and weighty. Plate is armor. It, it is both cumbersome, oh, is cumbersome and, weighty. and weighty. Oh. Cumbersome I... means you are you are like holding on to one uh one exhaustion just by wearing it, basically. Oh. Can I and make you... up mm-hmm. that it's that there that it like comes in parts where I can have like just a breastplate or something to make it less cumbersome when I'm not worried about danger? Yeah, that probably is and not. It, that's probably not what the rules, right? <laughs> well, what it is is that you take off parts of it, and you become less protected. So you can still wear it. Right. It's just not doing anything. But right? she definitely wants the show of like, yeah. Look at my shiny armor, mm-hmm. and it makes me look a little bigger, <laughs> and makes her <laughs> feel slightly more ready for something. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the three of you get settled in in the afternoon moves on um what uh now daisy we've got to talk about you agreeing to help people particularly the irie just Did right off the bat them? you said Did we're I? helpful like they said we have a problem you're like well we could help i don't they're the I, irie yes we're I here at the irie were, yes i thought they were just guards of the town the town is was... part of the irie oh, i don't understand politics it's okay. okay. Just, just remember. Okay. The diary aren't necessarily to be trusted. They have their own agenda. They're not the worst. I wouldn't want to stay in a Marcus Sot's town. But, uh, I'm so sorry. I thought they were like an independent town. There aren't many of those around. I see. Thank you for that education, Dave. Of course, we all knew that. Uh, I'm just, I'm just pretend I didn't say that. Roderick looks looks around, <laughs> didn't realize that this wasn't an independent town either. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> How do you know these things, Andrew? I'm just assuming because it's got uh, it's lots the, of bird stuff. It's got a lot of bird stuff. That makes sense. Are the Irie I've, all birds? They're okay. very bird bird uh, related. Okay. That's why they don't get dom- along with the cats. Bird right. dominance. Wait, so who are the rebels? The Woodland Alliance. The Woodland Just Alliance. Just that everyone. Okay. I th- I didn't realize it. I heard the cats, but I didn't realize the Irie were just birds. Well, Sorry. so the Irie. Bird dominant. The, the, the people, who, the ruling class are the birds. These okay. mice are still Irie. Oh. Yeah. Writing things down. <laughs> like the uh, Marquis de Cat is a cat, but the people who follow her may not necessarily be cats. Okay. So in yeah. this town, the the bird, the rich bird people that live overhead are mm-hmm. definitely the Irie. It, and then it's the, a good assumption. And then the mouse people on the ground that live in the same town uh-huh. but are not allied with them. Oh yeah, they are. They they're are. subjects oh. of the IRE yeah. in a way, or something, oh. and yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. But they're all part of the same like empire or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, it's not so <laughs> obvious to me. <laughs> it was it's obvious right, to me. It's like it's like that you were raised in like 
blood and battle instead of like history and social science. That's all I right. did come from farm people. It said so. <laughs> it said so. As if you didn't live this I, life. I said so. <laughs> I know you told me. That's why I was reminding you. Thank you for your help, Dave. Mm. <laughs> Uh, would the, the three of you like to get your weapons repaired? What, uh, what do you want to do with the afternoon as it, um, marches on? We How just do want to do go that? straight to the beer burrow and, and die. Oh, I really should repair our gear. Otherwise yeah. it breaks. Yeah. Is it damaged? Yeah. Yes. You have to have two damage across your gear. Okay. We definitely want to repair that then. Yeah. Where uh, would you like to go? What sort of place are you looking for? Mm. My chainmail needs an armorer. And my bow needs what? What's a Fletcher. That? Fletcher. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank and you, Billy. A <laughs> Fletcher. <laughs> just, he's just uh, been waiting with his hand out, waiting for a tip. <laughs> I've been... <laughs> I've been thinking. I was like, shouldn't we give him some coins? But then we just moved on. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll just not say that. I'm going to drop him like a coin. But she's kind of stingy because she likes her money. Uh, <laughs> he's blind. Are you going to steal mask. it back? And he says, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, Billy. Uh, before you go, him? before you go, Billy. Yeah. Point us to the nearest uh, armor, Fletcher, blacksmith, the one that you might recommend in the area. Well, I haven't had a need for one, but, um... Uh... I don't know. What's a good name Who do you for hear is well, good? There's a, there's a local badger who's pretty good at this sort of stuff, and their name... Is Dooley. Dooley. Thank you for your recommendation of Dooley. That deserves another coin, I suppose. <laughs> just paying for information. Like, um, you just walk outside. It just, <laughs> Roger just, gives him a, 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 a Marky Sock coin that is uh, useless to them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Billy sniffs Good it idea. and walks away. Sniffs it because he's blind. He's got a he's got a very sensitive nose. Now I feel bad. Oh, uh, he can he can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he can yeah, smell the insults. He knows, so he he knows, knows what you gave him. <laughs> he can smell the insult. <laughs> it's all right when when Roderick rules the world. He can <laughs> accept any form of currency, and then That's Billy right. will be rich. That's well, they'll be melted down and. <laughs> Uh, Turned with, into rods. Uh, yeah, call exactly. Rods. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that cost three rods, sir. <laughs> the three of you head out towards the blacksmith that you were told about. Uh, Dooley's is uh, a stone cottage. You can see the smoke coming up through a, a stack on top. And uh, you can hear the sounds of... of um, the bellows uh, puffing and the, the fire crackling. You can hear the sound of hot metal plunged into water and steam uh, poofs out of this um, this sort of uh, open enclosure along the back of it. You uh, walk up to uh, this sort of fence that surrounds it and you see a big badger with their leather apron pounding uh, uh, what looks like a sword on a um, on an anvil. There are a couple other uh, denizens um, working as well um, on their own projects. We approach, or at least I approach. Mm hmm get uh get Dooley's attention. Uh, Dooley does not look up and says What's Dooley's voice? He's a badger. Ah, uh, that traveler. 
what brings you to the shop today? Well, we need a little mending and repair. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And Dooley uh, puts the, the sword and water and the steam blooms out and they, they look up at you. Ah, uh, yeah. Your armor is in need of repair. We can take care of that for you. What'll it cost us? What have you do got? You, do you accept rods? Don't know what they, they don't are. Don't exist yet. <laughs> One rods. day you will. <laughs> One day, mark our words. For now, we have some of your local coin, I believe. Hope so. Oh, we can barter. Couple- are you open to barter? <laughs> do you need a favor? The way it works in the game, because everybody uses different currency, is you actually don't quote me on this. I believe you mark depletion. (laughs) Uh, One depletion is worth one um, fixing. So one repair. So you're going to mark your two depletion to do your two repairs. And you what do you pull out of your pockets to pay duly with? what he wants. Yeah, he deals in metal. I think yeah. uh, Dave pulls out uh, a Marcus set dagger that he took off the, the bridge battle. It's a mm. small little oh, what are they called? Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. A oh, tiny it's a, dagger. It's a, can it be a dirk? Is it one of That's those what I'm thinking, ones? Yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Dooley takes it and inspects it, inspects the blade and turns it and closes one eye and looks at the, the edge of it and takes it in knots. Um, I sort of hate that I'm going to do this, but I had this in my mind. One of my drives is called Traveler which I can advance when I replace a valuable or meaningful item with one that represents the local culture. Um, I don't know what I gain from fulfilling my drive. I guess maybe it's just a thing that I I just want to do. Now that's you get some advancement. It's actually very good if you complete your drive. What are you willing to give up? I hate to do it. I'm going to give him my spider ring. Your spider uh, ring. Why, why not? That's such an important part of your backstory. <laughs> but it's going to, whatever I receive will be the next important step in my backstory. It's a choice. It has to be meaningful. It's a meaningful. Uh... Okay. You give Dooley your spider ring. Hey, are and... you sure about that? That was such a cool ring. <laughs> Well, everyone will wear one under my reign one day. I can't wait to get mine. It's true. He did promise me a spider ring. (laughs) Uh, Dooley takes it and inspects it and puts it down on the anvil and walks inside and comes out with a, a small, like, spyglass and holds it up again and inspects it through this little glass and without even looking away from it, says, do you know what you have here? I'm loosely aware. It is an ancient trinket artifact. What do you want for it? I'd like, it'd be lovely if you could repair all of our things. Perhaps make the three of us some cheap replicas of the spider ring. <laughs> Good idea, boss. Good idea. Is, is that, does that count for uh, uh, something that represents local culture? I don't think it does. Yeah, you're right. And uh, in the replicas, add a flair of what it is to be a blacksmith. 
in Pelinicky Glade. Like his own mark, your own mark, so we can remember you. <laughs> that I can do. <laughs> he nods and he pockets it. And you are advancing. That counts. Thanks, wow. boss. That was real generous of you. <laughs> Uh, I feel like we got a lot out of that. <laughs> that was a good you, ring. You may, you're, you have choices. You may add plus one to a stat of your choice to a maximum of plus wow. two. You may take a new move, cross country. Take one extra box of exhaustion. When your exhaustion track is full and you must mark exhaustion, you may choose to mark an equivalent amount of injury instead of being removed from the situation or going unconscious. Wow. Or take a new move. Don't shoot the messenger. Take the counterfeit <laughs> roguish feet. When you pretend to be an innocuous me messenger carrying a missive or of import to trick someone, roll with luck instead of cunning. Or mm. take two new roguish feats, hide and sleight of hand. Or take two new weapon skills, harry a group, and quick shot. Wow, these are all awesome. Um, what is harry a group? Does that mean like get a group together to help you fight or something? Harry a group. Doesn't that makes them like upset to harry them. Yeah. You're harried, you're all frazzled. Oh. When you harry a group of enemies at far range, uh, you're going, hey, you're a bunch of jerks. Um, Mark, uh, no, you're, you're like shooting bows at them from a far range. That's basically what it is. Mm. Uh, mark wear on your weapon and roll with cunning on. 10 plus, you inflict two morale harm. You, you hurt their morale, and mm -hmm. they are pinned or blocked. On a 7 to 9, choose one of those two things. Hmm. So you're basically harassing them with, with weapons from a distance. Mm -hmm. It is a weapon skill that Dave has, by the way. Okay. I don't mind if we overlap, but I do. You can both Harry. I don't think it's good for me. I am. I'm going to do. I'm either going to do add one st stat or I'm going to do. Don't shoot the messenger. Let's I like see. that one more, but you do what you don't, want for fun. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, that'll it, be I fun if we get to you use a little it. bit. Better okay. than the other um, things. You, you already wanted to trick somebody with luck. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do don't shoot the messenger. Yeah, I did already try and do that. And my luck is good, actually. Cool. Okay. Uh, where were we? I was asking for a set of yeah. matching rings for our crew. and Yep, you were each pulling things out of your pocket. What does... Daisy uh, pull from her satchel to pay for these repairs. Well, he just paid for everybody, didn't he? I tried to. I don't Did know. Did it not that, work? I don't think it paid for everybody. Okay. Oh, he just asked. I assumed it worked because yeah. he sounded like it was really valuable. <laughs> okay. Um, so he got he got you all spider rings. Jing That's what <laughs> he did. What more could you want? What more could mm -hmm. you want? You got to come back tomorrow for him, though. Right. So I collect coins and things that jingle in my purse pouch. And so she's got some little um, iron coins. No, no, iron buttons that she gathered from somewhere because she's a scavenging mouse and thought that he might appreciate some extra metal because <laughs> iron worker. <laughs> she's uh, got like a fistful of special iron buttons that are like good quality and you just iron ore. drop him into his his big <laughs> paws and he says well he's not worth very much but <laughs> i guess it'll do. i've just got i've just got let me see what i have uh there's a lot of them 
There's just a couple dings in my armor and a little nick in my axe, if you wouldn't mind helping me out. Uh, the dings are easy. The, the nick is going to be... I'll have this for you as soon as I can. Thank you kindly. And he goes back to work. He pulls the the sword out of the out of the fire and starts <laughs> knocking on it again on the a hammer get on the anvil. And um, one of the assistants comes up and says, "Well, we'll have everything for you in 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 a few hours if you stop by uh, just after dark." Hmm. We've got a prior engagement. <laughs> Hmm. What do you think? Should we, should we go to the, to the beer borough first? They did say sundown. Quarter after. Hmm, we've got time. Why don't we just take a lovely stroll around the neighborhood, then come okay. here, gather our things, and then go. Mr. Dooley yeah. likes to go to bed early, but if you ring the bell, um, as long as it's before the, what day is it? Before the moon comes up tonight, Mr. Dooley should be awake. Master Dooley. Oh, it's master, is it? Okay. He's a there'll master be blacksmith. No, there'll be no masters one day. <laughs> Just you. That's right. <laughs> he looks at you. Gives you a knowing nod. <laughs> what? He's getting a spider ring on these days. <laughs> so I guess we go for a walk around town. <laughs> Sounds good. You go for a walk around town until it uh, gets a little bit darker out. And are you heading to the beer borough or are you going back to the blacksmith? Uh, Dave's pretty insistent. We, we've got to go get the the blacksmith first. I agree. Not, not so much to be trusted. As you get black, get black to the blacksmith. As you get back to the blacksmith, um, the uh, apprentices are. You see them uh, hammering at uh, at Daisy's armor, almost done, and don't have to wait very long before you. Pick up your stuff. And then you head to the beer burrow. Wait. I'm admiring my spider. Oh, no, the spider ring's not until tomorrow. tomorrow. Never mind. Oh, the spider ring is tomorrow? Okay. Uh, Can't wait. We Master Dooley is going to. <laughs> Master Dooley is going to work on the spider rings himself. Because he has to put a special mark in it that yeah. we take. Yeah. Was there something you wanted to do before heading to the beer burrow? It was a lovely stroll, but I think we're good now. Mm -hmm. As the sun sets and the three of you head to the beer borough, you make your way across town. You see the, the lights go out in the mayor's office in the center of town. And as you get to this place, this uh, little... Uh, Mouse burrow. It, it seems busy. You don't see it. There are a lot of mice around. Um, you don't see very many of the, the town guard there. Um, you can see that they're gathered at the at the gates as they begin to close the gates for the night. And uh, Dave, who's not very trusting of the Irie, is sort of watchful this whole time. I think as you you glance up, heading into the the beer burrow, um, you glance up at the um, at the uh, the fancy house. This house up in the trees, you see the silhouette of an owl. You get the reflections of uh, golden light in its eyes. Um, Above the watering hole? Up in the, up in the trees, this, um, uh, 
like mansion sort of thing. And you head in. As the three of you walk into the beer burrow, Doug, would you like to describe what this place looks like on the inside? Mm-hmm. Um, it is, it's lively. Um, and uh, if we weren't walking in from the dark of night, it would seem very dark in here. But it's illuminated with orange lanterns on the ceiling and uh, kind of supportive beams on the far walls. It's all very, like, dark wood. Um, a There's a, a frog. Actually, there's a frog and a toad. And they're, um, they are playing music on a small stage. One of them is standing on, like, a... a a little platform to the frog yeah. is just with an accordion <laughs> uh-huh. on top of like a beer barrel. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's uh, the toad playing? Is it, is it a big, is it like a it, long it could be sort a guitar of... accordion guitar is very like Irish music. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's happening. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, it must be, a lot of people must have the day off tomorrow or else they just like to party around here. Uh, but it's, I guess it's early in the night, so it's lively. A lot of people probably just got off work. Um, and we kind of strain our necks around to see who we're, who we're meeting, which is the captain, right? Captain Wosie? Yeah. Wosie? Yeah, so you see a... Uh, captain a- Wassel. Bosey. You see a, a, a middle-aged mouse behind the bar. You see uh, a number of people, mostly mice, uh, having having a, having a, a good time in here. Uh, the uh, flagons are overflowing. There's beer sloshing around. Um, you see a, a couple servers with plates just slamming them down on the tables, big bowls of things, and. Uh, soups and stews and and stuff like that and in a in a darkened corner you see the the brown fur and the um the uh sort of longer fur around the his his cheeks like mutton chops of this this captain we'll see um he is not he does not look like a guard right now he he looks like he is dressed to blend in with everybody else and maybe even blend into the point of of not being noticed he's in a darkened corner and uh quickly makes eye contact with Roderick and then goes back down to his drink i think there's i think there's some nonverbal communication and we make our way over and take a seat. Do we get drinks first or do we just go take a seat? It would be suspicious to not get drinks first. Fair enough. That's we do that. Uh, Roderick, I think you should get the drinks and then Daisy. Or no no, Roderick, you go sit. Daisy, you get the drinks. I'm gonna go over there. And he points to a dark corner with eye line eyesight on the the bench the the where Wosi is so you you want daisy to go meet with Wosi. roger no to get i said drinks. it backwards i want roger to go meet with Wosi. okay Daisy to get the drinks and you're going to you observe doing? i'm going to do what i do best and that's the hey, only that answer you get and he quietly just walks away <laughs> loners okay i guess i know your drink order <laughs> Or I just bring you something I think you should have. <laughs> Why did you bring this to me? I didn't. I keep my hands free. Uh, okay. So, um, Daisy goes up to the bar. And uh, the person serving drinks is this um, uh, middle aged mouse. And she says, Hello. You're new around here. True. 
What will you be having tonight? Three of... Do you, do you have a, a specialty? Maybe a, a lager? Hunt? <laughs> Three of the special. I can do that. And she goes over to a tap and starts pouring them out. And says, so what brings you to uh, Pelniki Glade? We're wandering through. Um, what did we say? We're just here for to see the sights and relax and rest up after our journeys. Well, there ain't many sights to see around here. Oh. Hmm. You have some real pretty bird houses. <laughs> For lack of a better word. She goes to the drinks and shakes her head. <laughs> <laughs> the rich folks have good mansions. <laughs> really admiring the canopy up there. Oh, the canopy's one thing, but the uh, the uh, the gossocks would be fine just without them. Why is that? Well, the the Irie, they're not. <sighs> yeah, agreed. They're not. They're not. No, but they won't listen to reason. He's the uh, Irie, the Marcusat. They just want to take and take and take. And, well, here's a drink. What are they taking from you guys? Freedom. The usual. <laughs> she slides the drinks across the counter to you. Thank you much. Uh, I feel like I should ask about something in town. What should I ask about? Anything we want to know? <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you could ask about that owl who was... I... Yeah, but what do I, I don't, that's what I was trying to get at. I was like, I saw a cool owl up there. How do I say that? Um, sort of threatening, I, too. Yeah, do you always have owls hanging right above your your pub here? It's a real pretty one up there. Mm. He's been here ever since Kalem Goshawk got back. Who's Kalem? Well, who's, uh, uh, aimless, uh, one of the sons of the family. I always thought he would amount to nothing, but he came back a few weeks ago wearing the the ivory blue. I think he's joined oh, up. No. And that's who we think the owl is? Ah, uh, the owl came with him. With him? You can bet the owl's with the ivory as well. Oh, no. See, now they're all amongst you. I... B- before Callum came back, this place, I mean, we didn't have Irie to deal with. It was just uh, simple living. Uh, things weren't bad, but they weren't good either. But if the Irie's come and call in, then things aren't going to be good for long. I think they're on their way, in a bigger way. Well, with Alton Go- Gossop dead uh, one of the other Gossacks is going to try and take over do you, do you think they had something to do with that? <laughs> maybe uh, Ellerby you know, was- that was his oldest Wait. daughter she just took over the, the, the mayorship as soon as he died found his, uh, found his body one morning and, uh, and was, was sitting at the desk that she found him on the next do we like her? Is she good? <laughs> the mouse sort of looks around, looks off to a corner, and sort of stares off in that corner, and she says, yeah, we like her. We like her. We're all right. I see. What are they saying he died from? Mm, I can't talk about that right now. Fair enough. Here's your drinks. You said that already. <laughs> I've got other customers. Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you much. And, and I'll walk off and leave her alone. You, you walk <laughs> off and, a, and a, a bird goes up to the, the counter right behind you and orders uh, orders a couple drinks. Okay. 
Meanwhile, off in a darkened corner, Roderick sits down. Sitting across from him is the captain of the guard. You you said darkened corner, and I thought that was going to be uh, David because <laughs> there, like, there are darkened. multiple darkened darkened <laughs> corners, too. and there are multiple characters in darkened corners. It, it's a darkened David. Dave's in a darkened corner within reach. That's nearby. You don't have to search long for a darkened corner in a in a <laughs> tavern at night. Uh, yeah. But there's a cheer off from uh, one of the well lit ones, as uh, as as somebody uh, buys a round of drinks for somebody, for a group. Ah. <laughs> uh, Roderick uh, takes a seat across from this this uh, new acquaintance of his. So, what is it that you wanted to communicate with us this evening? You notice uh, as you sit down that um, Wosi has a has a a, uh, a mug of beer in front of him, and it has not been been touched. And um, he uh, says, "I could tell from." when the three of you came here that you uh you've been around you've been to been to the clearings you've seen both sides of the war am i reading that right um i'll lower my voice for you captain wosi but yes you're correct the three of us have had some difficulties entanglements with many sides of these wars and I depending on your answer uh, I'll just say think very hard about anything that you say knowing that information is that a threat <laughs> Not a th all knowledge is a threat Captain Woesy, including uh, your presence here, your your title. I could I could see that the three of you were observant. You were uh, alert, more alert than many of the people who come through here, just living their lives, walking through their lives uh, half asleep. I was hoping the three of you might help solve a problem that I'm having. Well, that will depend on the problem. It's a bit of a mystery, honestly. I mentioned that our former mayor, uh, Alton Gossack, died recently. Yes, you did mention that. What I didn't mention was that he was murdered found with a knife in his back. Do you suspect treason or uh, foul play? You gotta go with foul play. Do you suspect foul play, Captain Wosi? I foul, foul. suspect foul play, but my position limits my investigation, and I need people who are not in the pay of potential suspects to look into this crime. Well, see, what's your motive? What's your end game in solving a mystery of this political nature? My motive is to get the crime solved. I want to see whoever did this do time. They... Alton was a friend of mine. Mm. We, hopefully, we could solve this. We could clear part the curtains of 
this uh, this tragedy for you. Now, does this have anything to do with the Iris uh, chokehold on what, or perhaps future chokehold on this fine clearing you have here? And Daisy arrives with the drinks. Meanwhile, across the bar, what is David doing? Uh, true to any ranger, Dave has found a spot where he can keep an eye uh, right well within reach of Roderick um, and is surveying the crowd, reading the room. Uh, it's contemplating a little bit uh, about the owl outside. That didn't seem good. He w- plays it over a few times in his mind to know if... Did he make eye contact? Did he recognize me? And, yeah, just kind of listening in. It's hard to tell if he made eye contact. But there was a great distance between you and the owl. But you know that the owl's eyesight is good. Probably saw you. The bar looks like any other bar. The one thing that stands out is the one bird in this bar who's sort of lingering behind Daisy, waiting for the uh, waiting for the um, uh, bartender to free up. And um, yeah, they they are. Uh, a jay of some sort. They've got the um, long feathers on the top of their head and um, they're the only bird in here. And and this sort of place is not the place where some uh, wealthy people would would typically hang out. Um, Do they look wealthy? Or is it a weird bird that isn't wealthy? uh, They look like... A very drunk, wealthy person. <laughs> they look okay. a little sloppy, uh, but you can see the the wealth hanging off them. Uh, you can see the the finer clothes that that stand out in this place. And uh, as Daisy walks from the bar, they sort of lean on the bar, and and uh, the mouse there shakes her head and gives them a uh, two drinks, which he takes off to a table and has both to himself. (laughs) I think Dave quietly makes his way over there. Uh, I'm not seeing anything else of danger at the moment for his ward. He slips into the booth to get a read on this, this bird. You're slipping into the booth with the bird or near with the, the bird? bird. You just, with the bird. You just join him? Yeah, I, I sit opposite the bird. And, yeah. Old move. Uh, well, you've got two. I presume you're sharing that one? It takes a, a second to register. Oh, who are you? <laughs> who are you? I asked you first. Hey, but you got me the beer. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't. Are you sure? This no, one's not these for are me. Both for me. Mm. Two different flavors. This one is a special one. This one's a little darker. This one's got a little treat in it. <laughs> Celebrating something, are we? Oh, quite the opposite. Oh. I you had wanna... little treats to your drink for. Covering up your woes, are you? You you could say that. I I did. I did say that. What what seems to be the trouble? (sighs) 
he closes his eyes and thinks for a second and passes you a drink and stands up and says, no, no, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing this. No, I've got to go. Dave stands up as well. And take a load off. You've been through something. No, no. It's, I've, I've got, hmm, I've got a reputation to uphold. I, I've got a. This isn't, this isn't me. I gotta go. I, just, you're, you're making a bit of a scene. If you've got a reputation to uphold, the best thing you could do is sit right back down. Pretend like you're here to meet me. You're trying Tell me to what's troubling you. Persuade an NPC. I guess I am. Oh, I forgot about that stuff. <laughs> about rolling the dice? <laughs> we, we do it sometimes. <laughs> we do it sometimes. No, like the moves. I was trying to keep them in mind. It didn't. Oh. I would really like to read a tense situation. If we feel that this is a bit tense. Um, I don't, I think based on the questions that you get to ask for read a tense situation, and that is maybe not the appropriate one. Okay. Because that's all about threats and vulnerabilities and stuff like that. I don't think that's where we are right now. Okay. <laughs> and I will persuade this NPC to sit back down. I won't because my cunning or my charm is a negative one, but I'm going to try. Let's roll a 12. I rolled a seven. A minus six one. Six and a two minus one. Okay. So eight minus one, seven. Yeah, yeah. So um, on a seven to nine, they're, they're not sure. So he's like, oh, I don't know. I, I've got to be up early tomorrow. I've only had I've only had three drinks I've only had three drinks I can See do this I can, make it I'm, so mm, 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 mm. <laughs> mm. no I'm I'm gonna I'm mm. so you need you need to sway them mm -hmm. and I think to sway them uh, you are going to have to you're gonna have to buy him some food. You're gonna have to Do get him quickly have, on drunk. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't have sleight of hand. I was gonna ask if I could just take food from the table next to us, but you can you can trust I fate. I will buy it to use sleight of hand. Hmm. So, I'm assuming my choice is here in learning this game. I can mark another box of depletion or trust fate. Is that mm -hmm. where I'm at? Yep. Uh, what's my luck? It's zero. It's better than negative one. Yeah, we're going to trust fate. We're going to trust fate. I don't, don't want to run out of depletion. I don't want to deplete it too much. <laughs> A nine. A nine. That's pretty good. A nine. Uh, so that is a hit. You, uh, it's going to cost you something. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to use that like we do in our, our Genesis of Star Wars games and say that I'm, I'm basically banking that threat. Something is happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of right now that has to do with you uh, stealing food off a plate. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I don't this, like that, but I will accept it. Yep. Um, the server, uh, a, a server walks by. Um, they are a cat. You can see their tail swishing behind them as they uh, hold this this plate. And you g quickly grab something off of it and uh, put it in front of this person. And he says, oh, <sighs> thank you. Uh, I'm Zale by the way. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Zale. What's troubling you? <sighs> My father. Oh? Died. Oh. 
Well, that's problematic. It's, I mean, uh, you weren't no expecting it, I it. assume? I was... Quickly looks around. No, I was not expecting it. The cats get him. The cats? Or just what, what, what happened to your father? Uh, it's an old expression. Don't worry about it. My sister just found him in the morning a couple days ago, and uh, the funeral's tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow? Same day as the the what? What did they say at the gate? Uh, the mayor? Was it? The mayor. I'm yeah. gonna be the mayor. You're the. In a place like this, you're the My mayor. Campaign is. Uh, I'm. I'm working on it. I can see that. That's why I need to go. I have to be and up early tomorrow. But you came down here. Are you feeling a little worried about your campaign? This is the last place we spend time together. Oh, when was that? Was that yesterday or the day before? It was a few days ago. A few days ago, okay. That's interesting. You don't normally hear the mayor of a town bringing his son to a place like this. Did you have a good time while you were here? We, we did. Any conversations you recall? Anything odd about such a, a thing? It could help your campaign. He blinks a couple times. Could it? Soup is really Aye. good. <laughs> no, my 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 brother came back from wandering and <sighs> No, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. We were just having a good time. Oh, all right. Yeah, if you don't mind me saying it, it just seems a little bit odd. You know, your father dying of natural causes just a few days after a visit in a place like this, and you're back here. My father. <laughs> I slide the drink I took back over to him. No, Give no, no. <laughs> Have it. I don't, I don't need it. You gotta get up early. That's what the oatmeal's for. You can have the drink and the oatmeal at the same time. Splashes a little of his drink in the oatmeal. There you go. There you go. There you go, young man. It'll be all right. I've got. I've got to pull it together for Mama. I, I do find that as helpful. You've got to be a strong boy. I, I. So you're running a campaign against uh, who? If you're up, you're opposing somebody, you don't just inherit the the title of mayor. Mayor? No. What? What place inherits mayors? <laughs> Not a mayor prince. Each place has its own custom. It's not an odd question. <laughs> My sister yeah. Ellerby, she's acting as mayor now. <laughs> oh. And you want to take that job away from her? I think I would be best in it. <laughs> Oh, let's work on your campaign right now. Why would you be more suited than your sister? Because... Be because... Because... Hey... The biggest reason anyone has to vote for you... Because... 
You got anything else, young man? But if you don't have seen it, I think you need a little bit more. Hey, okay. I, I used to write speeches. Why don't you tell me about your family, your family history, why you, all of that stuff. <laughs> everything. Just tell me everything. That's fine. I'll help you. <laughs> your whole life story. Uh, roll to any, figure any, someone out. Any crucial plot information you might have for me. <laughs> Uh, more charm. More charm. Why did, I, why did I come talk to this guy? <laughs> uh, seven again. Another six and a two with the minus one. All right. Uh, you get a question. <clears throat> um, how do I get the character to reveal his secrets? <laughs> You know what my favorite part about about this book is? What's that? Is is the part where it says you can't is a completely valid answer oh, in some goodness. situations. Okay. I don't think this guy's going to give away all his all his deepest darkest secrets. How about what he intends to do? Do I get is 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 no? You that can't. was an answer. Is an answer. Okay. I don't yeah. get to ask another question. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, so, so Dave reading the situation, trying to figure this guy out, and realizing that he's not going to get any of the secrets from this blubbering buffoon. Not in his current state. Says nothing. Gets up and goes back to his dark corner. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Meanwhile, across the bar. <laughs> Daisy walks up with a couple drinks. What was the last thing that uh, Roderick asked? It was about the uh, the Irie, right? So, would you say that since the new mayor's taken hold, there's been any more love for the Irie? Have they taken a chokehold over over this clearing? Well, one of the uh, mayor's children has, has recently come back to town. It's been, um, they say he's uh, joined with the Irie and has probably brought some sort of deal back with them for uh, us uh, officially joining the cause. We've been um, between, I guess you could say, between rulers for a while. You know about the civil war with the Irie and, and all that. Yes, of course we do. They, uh, there were so many people vying for uh, dominance and we offered favors to a few of them and none of them came after this particular clearing. Well, it seems they finally come with Callum. Oh, I've heard of him. He 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 brought the owl overhead. I asked about it. Mm. Yes. Uh, Count Dridge. Count Dridge. That's the owl's name. It is. That is a very threatening name for a. Scary owl hovering above looking at us. You think there'll be any trouble since he saw us? Um, Felt a little menacing up there. You no, know, he just likes to keep an eye on the comings and goings. And uh, when strangers are in town, he, he just likes to know what's going on in the glade. Bartender said he came back with Callum after wearing the iry blue. That is true. Could you describe, tell us more about Callum. Uh, <laughs> Callum's, uh, I'd say the, the black sheep of the family. He, uh, well, he's, he's, he seemed aimless for, uh, for a long, long time. And it's only recently he, he, he journeyed off and 
came back and uh, seemed to uh, seems to have uh, found his place in the world. Does that seem any bit surprising to you? Who he chose to end up with? It's, being a black sheep and all? It's a little surprising, I I, I must say, but um, one of them was bound to uh, make ties with the greater world. We've been uh, lucky to not have uh, war come to this clearing, and um, well, it was only a matter of time, but uh, if we do officially join the Irie, we've got plenty of protection. Is that something y'all are planning to do? I suppose it depends on, on the family. I don't have much say in these things. Hmm. So Rod, what did I miss? What is he asking us to do? Uh, well... Captain Wosey here suspects that... The death of the late Mayor Altov Gas. Uh, what was it? Altov Alton. 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 Goshawk. Alton Goshawk. Apologize. No disrespect meant. Uh, death was no accident. And that perhaps the three of us could trace down what really happened. What do we know so far? The bartender wouldn't tell me how he died. Apparently a stab to the back. Oh, my. Now, that's a great question, uh, Wosey. Keep your voices down, please. Right, of course, of course. Now, Wosey, what else don't we know? And also, what are we going to get out of this? That's the question. What, uh, what's, what's your notoriety as far as the, um, the Irie? So, because it's only a three-tiered system. Oh, because you chose from the other book. You don't have don't, any you can't Irie, blame me for this. Irie notoriety. <laughs> can I, can we just say that my, um... My uh, Marky Sot and Iori are the same, sure. Um, but I got a I got a negative um, Marky Sot because we had a scuffle with them. But I had a positive Marky Sot also. So can I have one positive uh, Iori? So well, what he says to you is that, well, I can put out the good word of your deeds to to the Iori. Um, you you can rest assured that uh, they will contact you with odd jobs and uh, if you'd like other um, mysteries such as this one in the future, uh, if you prove yourselves, I can offer um, uh, a small stipend. I can absolutely cover your room wherever you're staying. Cover, covering our expenses is great. We are, as we said, checking in at the gate unaligned with the Irie or the Marquisat. Um, not that we wouldn't uh, take passing a checkpoint or two, but we don't work for organizations, rulers such as the Marquisat or the Irie. We'll see. I hope, hope you'll make an exception. I assumed we were meeting as... as people here, denizens, if you will, of this... of this forest, this clearing. Uh, this is personal to you, Wosey, and... that's why you've piqued my interest. This is personal to me. But it is political at its heart. And whatever uh, evidence you find, whatever uh, conclusion that we come to, there will be repercussions. The Irie will know. What about it was personal? I was friends with the former mayor. 
sorry for your loss. Thank you. Well, well, see, I think I'll need to discuss this with my uh, my contemporaries. And if there, if you've given me all of the insight that you have, then we should we should be on our way. I know that the uh, funeral takes place tomorrow. We all should get a good night's rest. What he said. Very good. I will meet with the three of you tomorrow morning, if that is agreeable. When's the funeral? Uh, two hours after sunrise. Early. They are early birds, after all. Of course, of course. <sighs> not, not so much me. I'm... I'd say I'm a night owl, but not quite like the one above us. Where shall we meet you tomorrow? At the guardhouse. We'll see you then. He gets up and walks off. And across the room, David is observing, listening in on conversations and whispers in the corners of the room. And he hears whispers of the... Alliance. These people talking about revolution. He hears a whisper of the silent awe and her powerful deeds across the country, the things that she's stolen. And that there was uh, something missing from the uh, from the mayor's office and they are blaming the silent paw and you hear somebody talking about a, a meeting later how careful are they about this meeting do i get to know where it is oh no it's, it's very happening? it's very whispered and uh hard to hear over the sounds of the of the the, the din of this place um if you want to listen in Let's see. You would have to get closer and possibly hide a, a roguish feat. A roguish feat. But it is a roguish feat I have. That means you get to use finesse. Finesse. Just really slink into those dark corners. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do what I do best. All right. Finesse is, is finesse a finesse good for one. you. Yeah, it's good enough. All right. I keep thinking I have to like add, like ask for boosts or things. No uh, boosts. I got a six. Oh, plus one. Mm, I got a five plus one. <laughs> okay. As you slink into a dark corner to overhear this conversation between the bartender and somebody else, you. You find the perfect spot to hear, but it takes just a little bit too long. And as you get there, the conversation dwindles and the, the people involved move on. I hate when that happens. Every time. What do the three of you want to do now? Uh, well, I want to break into things and investigate the body and all of that, but I don't know what everybody else wants to do. I wonder where the body is. Um, hmm. Do we, did the three of us like step outside and share information for a second? You step outside into the cool night air, the sounds of this place uh, quiet as you go out. And um, walking up the steps, you can see the uh, the moonlight shining through the leaves above you. And uh, 
Yeah, and I think as David looks up, he sees a, a shadow fly across the moon. Maybe we should find another place indoors. Any recommendations for where should we should reconvene, chat, let's, discover? Let's just make our way back to the root bound inn, I say. Get behind a closed door. Absolutely. That sounds wise. You walk across the clearing, passing the large trees and and burrows with their little lights on in the windows. You can smell the, the cooking coming from some of them. You uh, pass that blacksmith and head back to the rootbound inn. The desk is um, empty as you walk in, and uh, a little bell rings above the door, and you make your way towards your rooms. There's a little lounge area out in the... Um, out in the front too. I think there's a fireplace going. This isn't like a big inn. There's no like um, uh, dining area. I think if you if you were to ask Elaine, she would probably provide some sort of food, but it would be in their their own kitchen. More of a bed and breakfast. Yeah. Uh, Dave basically gives the the room and and kind of a, an extra once over. Uh, still a little extra paranoid. And you asked for quiet. Hey, a little too quiet. Uh, if I if if Dave is satisfied that so far nobody is snuck into their room or anything along those lines. Uh, so far, nobody so far. Has snuck into their rooms. <laughs> Shield's still here. Yeah. Check the trunk. All right. Well, I, I think we got some good information there. Um, I don't know if I personally care that much about what the the Iri do, but if they haven't put their thumb down on the folks around here, uh, maybe a wee bit of intervention can keep that from happening. It seems to me that perhaps little investigation we can figure out what we want to tell uh winchester what was the captain's name wosi that's right um any good investigation you know takes a look at the the body and then i i heard some rumors about uh something being stolen from the mayor's office might want to go Check that out without prying eyes about. Hmm. Any any clue on what was stolen? Well, no. It uh, seems to be valuable. It, there's rumors that uh, there's whispers that uh, the Woodland Alliance was potentially behind. An assassination and theft gone wrong, perhaps. But uh, I couldn't hear what I needed to before they got up and left. Hmm. That is a shame. I want to know how many kids the mayor had. Well, there was the blubbering one in the corner. (laughs) And he has a sister. I heard about the sister... And Callum. Ooh, Callum. Is Callum the brother or the sister? I'm. What? <laughs> there's a there's a sister who's taken over the office, LRB. Mm. Uh, you wrote it somewhere. I can't find it on my notes. And <laughs> um, and the brother came back. He was a black sheep and came back with the Irie. It, I'm just wondering how many other kids are going to surprise us with what's going on. Is it possible Hillary, that yeah, Callum was the one you were speaking to, David? Did you get that? Sale. Yeah, he said his name was Ale. Oh. Ale? So that's three. 
Everyone's a suspect as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. <sighs> well, if you know what I'll say. The diary aren't to be trusted. That's agreed. If it was the if it was the Woodland Alliance, then what was their game? They've just handed the city to the Irie and made themselves a, a threat. I would be. It would seem surprising if they were the, the culprit. You said there was a dagger or a, a knife in the back. I wonder if we could get a look at that. We, it might tell us who we belong to. Mm, the knife would likely be in the possession of the either the coroner or the local constabulary. Uh, and he's getting put in the ground tomorrow. Tomorrow. You mentioned, hmm. you mentioned checking out his body, Dave. Do you feel that we ought to... Is there something specific you'd want to look for? You know, things like the dagger and the report. You think they left it in him? I think they would keep it nearby. Really? If you were conducting an investigation, you took a knife out. You're not going to throw it in the garbage. But you think it's with the body? This funeral's tomorrow. Where do you think they're keeping it, Daisy? Constabula- constabulary sounded good. It's got the word stab in it, after all. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh, hell, I'm convinced. <laughs> I was just curious what else if if we need to see the body tonight's our only chance. If they're burying the the body quickly and they're preparing it this evening for the funeral in the wee hours of the morning tomorrow, then this would be our last opportunity to see the body. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Why are we arguing about this? (laughs) I I would agree with both of you that tonight is the is our last chance to gather a fair amount of evidence that will be literally buried tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> the knife will probably still be around. I don't think they'd bury him with it, but if there's something to look for on the body... Oh, are we an expert on that... Irie burial traditions now? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope the knife isn't already buried. Uh, Ooh, good point. <laughs> but, yes, perhaps we should take a closer inspection of of our uh, uh, previous mayor and uh, see if we can locate this <laughs> this utensil of uh, of murder as opposed to instrument <laughs> I can just I'm just reaching into the <laughs> I'm looking out the window in the darkness and reaching <laughs> no, this, this would be an excellent pun later once we discovered that the knife wasn't a weapon but it was in fact a carving knife <laughs> Like a, a steak knife, <laughs> literally a utensil. Sure, I, I really like how you set that one up uh, there. <laughs> I think as the three of you are having this conversation, you begin to hear muffled oh, shouts no. uh, from uh, from a neighboring room. An What's argument. That? You can hear two voices. Barely making out what they say. What are, you to what are they saying? Probably the I'm timing. Isn't that great? Maybe we should uh, investigate. Are you going to investigate? As we go there? Uh, yes, let's investigate. Let's get closer. Which uh, roguish feet would you like to use? I am good at sneaking. Sneak. We sneak. all have sneak. You all have sneak. Let's get sneaks for everybody. All oh, right. okay. Is that still finesse? Sneaks. It's still finesse. What does that mean? That means you are adding whatever uh, number is next to your finesse on your sheet. Which My finesse is very good. Daisy is plus two. Two. Pretty good. Plus two. So roll your dice and add two. I roll and then I add plus yep. two. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's loud. The that's your I first roll, roll Doug. Roll. Mm. That was my first roll. 
And what'd you get? I got 13. Thir- 13. I got a... With the... Yeah, total. Okay. <laughs> Doug? It, it doesn't matter, but I rolled a 12 plus my finesse, which is three. So I got a 15. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't make it... It's not a triumph. <laughs> How badly did you fail? Oh. How badly did I fail? I failed by yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> He knocked something over with his big bushy tail. Oh boy! Okay. Can't I pass my some of my fifteen? <laughs> um, no. So Can we just kick him aside. Uh, wow, that that is impressive. Um, yeah. So, tell me about the beautiful sneaking that Daisy <laughs> and Roderick do. Well, I'm a mouse. <laughs> That's true. So we're half of the people in this this town. Yeah. <laughs> so with my very quiet pause, uh, I open the door and pitter patter. Like what is it? Like two doors away? <laughs> it's down the hall. It's it's uh, as you get out into the hall, you hear it. It's coming from um, the room behind uh, that front room, like where the front desk is. Oh. So, like, maybe Elaine or the office people? Okay, so we walk down, I pitter-pat down the thing, and nary a whisker nor tail bumps or scratches anything because it's so sneaky. And we, and I hear stuff if I get to the door. And Roderick? I think that this is actually, like, the three of them have snuck or sneaked around before as the British say uh, uh, and Roderick's technique for the three of them sneaking is to sneak on the ceiling as a bat oh that's so cool he the little hooks. reaches up and he kind of hooks around uh, and the two of you get to the door of this room and you hear Elaine and somebody else uh, speaking loudly and Elaine says, well, what do you expect me to do? And the other person says, now is the perfect time. If we're going to rise up, we do it now. That family is in chaos. And Elaine says, but the Irie is here. It does. It won't take much for that owl to go off and bring legions of soldiers. If not now, when? And then... David. Oh, Dave. Um, he just walks down the hall. He assumes the conversation is happening behind a closed door. So I don't yeah. know what we're doing all the sneaking for. As he gets into the main, uh, that like loungy area, I think um, he notices that his two companions are indeed sneaking and the door is indeed open. And as he gets there, um, he is very visible. Uh, you, um, I think you're you're a little bit surprised at the uh, at the situation. <laughs> you take a step back and stumble over a coffee table, and we'll take. Um, no. You're, you're going to take one exhaustion, and uh, they have, have spotted uh, David. They both look out the door, and uh, Elaine comes in and slams it closed. We were just looking for a drink of water. (laughs) Says a mouse out of nowhere. (laughs) Uh, She was with an older mouse. um, Somebody with uh, gray and white fur. Um, She was dressed in the typical uh, clothing that you see lots of people here dressed in with um, uh, sort of tunic and and uh, workers' clothes and boots. Um, and uh, yeah, they're talking much more quietly now. Hmm. Like, do we want to help? Are we interested in the uprising? I don't know. <laughs> uh, 
Mark, would we say that the denizens here feel a sense of oppression from the family, from the, the goshawks? I think so. I think okay. that sort of um, that revelry at the bar was it's that was like the one place where it seemed like people were like letting loose. There were n- no guards like the the captain was was the exception. And you could tell that he was dressed to fit in rather than in his guard clothes. Um, yeah. All right. There was also so, a wide berth around the bird. Yeah. I think <laughs> after dusting himself off from the coffee table, uh, trying to, you know, write it, put it back on all four legs only to discover that I've broken one of the legs and it wobbles now. Um, <clears throat> pull my mail, get it myself looking fresh and then stride through the closed door to where the mice are speaking. And then I hear someone say they needed help with that old owl dridge. You can leave him to me. Excuse me? Who are you? This is the older mouse. Eh, let's just say I have some unfinished business with that old hoot. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, look you up and down. Is there anything on David that says Woodland Alliance? Hmm. I recently gained one check mark in prestige. I had nothing. I think it was because our Woodland Alliance friends, uh, you know, helped us find a path away from our failed right. bridge c- construction. I think they they gave him a little carved token of their appreciation, a, l- a little bit of a passage, and he's kind of worn it on his hip, absent-mindedly. So he just like casually pushes his cloak aside, puts his hand on his hip so they can <laughs> see this like little wooden flower. Yeah. Aww. Uh, they are surprised. And they say, close the door behind you. Do you want to come in now? <laughs> they head around the door. A claw reaches around and opens the door from uh, very high above. <laughs> That's so cool. You two you are like very come, sneaky. Like down up under. <laughs> Thank you. And you two are very secretive, <laughs> but secrets out. Are you perhaps part of the Woodland Alliance? Travelers, this is uh, this is Osha. She is well. Um, I am. Yes, I am with the Woodland Alliance. This we have to strike now, Elaine. We have to do this now. We have to call everybody together. I don't care what Jessamy says. This is this is happening. Did you all, by chance, kill the previous mayor? No. Going straight for I it. I didn't know he was murdered. Huh. Huh. What kind of chaos did you mean was going on in the family? Uh, that is... Sorry, we are eavesdropping a little that bit. That is the chaos, yes. <laughs> uh... So it appears that the former mayor was murdered. We suspect foul play. Um, and that we suspect... What was the young man's name? Uh, Callum? Anyone hanging out with the Dridge is, is bad news. If it was a murder, it's likely it was done for political power. 
I would have, I had assumed that if it was the Woodland Alliance, uh, you would have striken as you will tomorrow, immediately afterwards. I think it's wise that you've chosen tomorrow as the day. It, Strength of the uh, Irie will instantly increase after tomorrow. I would not put it by anybody in that family to 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 do that. I'm surprised there aren't more rumors about it floating around. I had heard it was the silent paw, but that's just basically that's a myth. What would I they thought have you were the we silent heard... paw. Are you, are you well, no, say I'm not the silent paw. Is the silent paw a person, or is uh, my misunderstanding? I thought it was just the name what for your local cat? woodland alliance. No, it's a uh, it's a local it's a local myth. Uh, uh, a a vagabond who's one with the shadows. Some people say she's a thief. Some people say she's an assassin. Um, some people say she's a ghost. But it's definitely a thing. It's, it's She's real somehow. Yes, no. <laughs> Where would we find her if she did exist? <laughs> I imagine it's one of those assassins that finds you. Like most assassins. So sassy. What do you think they might have taken? Do you know of anything valuable that was... We heard somebody might have stolen something from the office, from the mayor. Um, Elaine looks at Osha. The knives? No. The uh, what's her name? The matriarch holds one of those. I don't think. No, I I don't know what a value they keep in the mayor's office. Might be some sort of political record, something like that. Maybe a treating treaty. I I don't know. What what's special about a, a set of knives? Uh, I haven't seen them, but they say that they're these just these jewel encrusted knives the um uh, the, the matriarch of the goshawk family holds them they're they're supposed to be beautiful and valuable hmm. we do enjoy beautiful valuable things that we do <laughs> uh if we were to find out what kind of knife may have killed the mayor? Uh, any idea what, what that set of knives, what kind of blade they might have had? They're, Osha looks back towards uh, uh, Elaine, and Elaine just shrugs. And Osha says, well, from what I hear, they were made forged by master fox, mouse, and rabbit smiths. Like They're they very up. nice. Yes. Fox, mouse, and what? Rabbit. Now, if you think it'll help, I can try to help you get into the mayor's office. Uh, I know when the guards are patrolling, so we can we can get in there. That will absolutely help. If you could also, before we go, fill us in on the uprising. Uh, that sounds like very important. Good question, boss. <laughs> well, there are a number of denizens around town who have joined the cause. It, um, the well, I shouldn't say who exactly, but there are those who would prefer a peaceful route. But as the wars of the past years have shown, there is no peaceful route anymore. We have to take matters into our own our own hands and and finish things. The 
Uh, there are a, a number of capable paws in in the uh, in the area who are willing to help. Um, few in the actual guard, but around town, um, a number of people who, if called, will rise up. Is there a signal, a time of day when the uprising is planned? There is a signal. Um, the bell tower at the edge of town, uh, when rung, the denizens will rise. Is, is it previously decommissioned? Does it not usually ring? It hasn't been in use in years. Ah. Got it. Bell tower. Hmm. So how do we get into that office? How do we further investigate? We leave now. Let's do it. I gotta get my axe. Left in the room to sneak. We will be doing more sneaking. I hope that won't be a problem. She looks I'm like very David. good at sneaking. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. David. <laughs> This fox As arrives precisely how he means to. He you, meant? <laughs> you gather up your stuff and... I think she wants something. No, and, uh, it's just the time. It's just the time. Is she yeah. saying it's bedtime? Yeah. Mark, yeah. Is he? It's what no. it is. Um, you gather up your things and you head out into the night. The moon is high in the sky, and uh, Osha takes you between shadows. Uh, shadows of... <laughs> Can you stop? Doug, you have a whole song about this. It's a fan fave. I know. <laughs> <laughs> sure. They always ask for the cat song. Oh, my cat doesn't do that, but it would drive me crazy if my cat was mad if I stayed up too late, because I do stay up too late too often. <laughs> Just knows better. Knows who you are. Yeah. But she you, does stuff like that all day. <laughs> you stick to the shadows, and uh, as you pass uh, close to the blacksmith, you hear the uh, clinking sound of armor and boots and you see a patrol pass with a, a lantern held high on a stick in the air and you wait for it to pass and move around a corner and you continue the ground everything seems gray in the um the the wash of light from the moon um the shadows are sharp and deep you get to the edge of the center of town and you can see the mayor's office in the center and you can see that there's a light on inside which Osha quickly and quietly says that's that's strange nobody should be there right now let's hang back and watch yeah we no we should get closer yeah no leave it to me I'll, I'll sneak up do it roll it okay you're going to get it this time. What's well, finesse? Finesse. That is 11. Okay. You are one with the shadows. You I am uh, one move, with the shadows. Move from shadow to shadow. You I'll move from shadow to shadow. <laughs> Look at him go like a fox. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself, Mark. Go ahead. Uh, you get close to the mayor's office and... Um, get up along the wall and peek around the corner towards the next uh, section of the building where you can see there's a light on in the window. And in the space in front of the office, um, you can hear uh, the quiet, uh, uh, like, rousing calls from the um, 
from the, the pub that you were at earlier in the night. And you can see the, the warm light glowing in the distance from the beer burrow. And in between where you stand and the beer burrow, you see a crouching figure. And on the ground, what looks to be a body. And the figure looks up and around the clearing. And you see their eyes catch the light of the the moon and reflect it back. And they jump up quickly to the roof of the mayor's office. You see, you lose sight of them as they dash along the ridge of the roof. The silent paw. Oh, wait, only he saw that. Did only he see that? He's the sneaky one. I'm the sneaky one. I mean, you all are better sneakers than me. Um, any clues on the body? It's a body. Do you want to go up and see who it is and see if they're still alive? Um, it's dark. Everything is sort of washed in gray. and It's shadowy. Uh, I yes, cautiously, sneakily, I want to go look at the body. You uh, cautiously, sneakily approach this body in the street, and you see the the stab in their side, high on their chest, and you roll them over, and you see the face of Zale. I don't think you'll be getting up too early tomorrow morning. 